Hey guys, it's Mr. Bison here. First of all, well done, you've completed all of Pure Maths now, just applied left for you. Now, what are my thoughts on this paper? Well, it definitely was more challenging than paper one, right? Paper one, I think, was pretty decent, and there was definitely a lot of questions in here that I think really will have tripped people up, or people might have felt a little bit intimidated by these. But you know what? That was to be expected. When I did those predicted topics of what I thought was gonna come up, they were tough topics, trigonometry, calculus, all of that kind of stuff. So this was kind of where I was hoping that the paper was gonna be. A few things I noticed, there was still only 15 questions rather than 16 like there has been in the past. And there's like loads of small markers now, which I think is a good thing because if you couldn't do one of those small marks in one of the parts of the question, it didn't make you feel too stressed if you couldn't do like a little sub part of it. So let's hope they continue that for future years and maybe even for paper three as well. There wasn't really that much crazy difficult calculus. I was expecting there to be something with parametric a little bit worse than what there was, even though that was not particularly easy anyway. And I did think there was a big, a, a good range of tough questions. I even thought question two, the sigma question, probably had some bits that would have had people sort of scratching their heads and thinking. And definitely the question 12 integration had some kind of unusual answers to it, which, which was not particularly pleasant. And question 14, the trig question, I mean, everybody's going to have struggled with that one that we had there. But there were some nice parts to it as well. I thought that the implicit differentiation question was pretty classic. If you'd done enough past papers, you have probably done one that looked just like that. And I thought the modulus modeling one, although it was something we hadn't seen before, I hope it was accessible and I hope it was something you felt like you could do. And also the vectors question, I hope you noticed that it was minutes and hours and that he went twice around the, the laps so that he did two laps. But if you didn't, it doesn't matter too much. There was also a few interesting topic blends, like the arithmetic one that I predicted coming up. They blended it with harmonic identities, which was pretty interesting. They seem to be doing a lot of that. So if you're watching this in a future year, then always looking out for sequences and series blending with other things. So it was good to see my predictions coming through, seeing implicit, differentia implicit differentiation, differential equations, trigonometry, binomial. So I'm hoping that that means there's going to be some other good predictions that I'll have for paper three in just a second. Now, in terms of the response so far, I've done a poll for paper one and a poll for paper two. For scoring it a four out of five, as in good four out of five, we had 58% of people saying that for paper one. Whereas at this stage, when I'm making this video, it's about 20 percentage points left. Or, uh, 20 percentage points lower at around 39%. So that's a pretty big difference. And if you look at the distribution for paper two, it's a lot more like a normal distribution. Whereas for paper one, it is skewed more towards the positive end, making us think that paper two has generally not been received as well. Now here comes a bit about grade boundaries. I do think that paper two has kind of like balanced it out a bit and kind of pulled it back into a bit more of a normal kind of range here. And we want to ignore 2022 as the grade boundaries because that was when they were adjusted to kind of take into account some of the stuff to do with COVID. Now, if there is an increase in grade boundaries, I would put it at the top end about 5%. I really can't see it going beyond that. But you can't quote me on this kind of stuff because we'll only truly know until all the papers have been done and all of them have been marked and they are then norm referenced by the examiners. So that might mean that an A could push towards 60, 61%. I would think it'd be unlikely for it to go much higher than that, but it's always good to work on the presumption grade boundaries are a little bit higher than what they are in the future just because that might help you in terms of getting the marks that you need. So a few things I just want to talk about for paper three now, some stuff that you should definitely be revising. Mechanics, every single year there is a question on projectiles, there's a question on moments or rigid bodies, which you'll find in my playlists, and there's always some kind of question that's forces on slopes or connected particles, and definitely some bits around variable acceleration and vectors. Some maybes, speed time graphs, maybe lifts kinds of questions, those are the parts that aren't guaranteed, but could definitely be there. For statistics, you better make sure you're prepared for the normal distribution, binomial distribution, conditional probabilities, Venn diagrams, they always have questions on these, correlation and regression, particularly with hypothesis testing, and then usually some stuff around averages and standard deviation, and I hate to say it, but there's going to be some large data set in there as well. Maybes, things like histograms, tree diagrams, and tables of distributions. So not so much to revise for those ones. You can be really, really targeted with what you're doing. And I just hope it goes really, really well for you guys. So wishing you the best of luck, and I will see you after paper three on Tuesday next week. Let me know how it went. Bye.